The United States market accounts for a third of India's pharmaceutical exports. Despite this, Indian companies have frequently fallen short of the exacting norms of US regulatory authorities. But data for the calendar year 2023 thus far tells us that we may inching back up in terms of compliance norms up to the pre-pandemic levels, if not exceed those. And these green shoots give hope for the industry, especially at a time when many other parts of the Indian economy seem to be doing well. In this episode, we will look at several perspectives of the pharmaceutical industry in India, but I'm also hoping that you will take away small nuggets of information on pharmacology. It's very interesting. A report by our sister publication Business Line tells us that in the first half of 2023, about 93% favorable outcomes emerged on a base of 94 factory visits by the US Food and Drug Administration. For context, this ratio averaged at 83% in the last decade, but had improved in the last five years. US FDA inspections in the last half decade averaged 2,400 per year with a favorable outcome ratio of 96%. When the US FDA inspects factories of Indian pharma companies, you could have one of two outcomes, favorable or unfavorable. Under favorable, it's again two options. One is NAI, the other is VAI. NAI is no action indicated, which means the US FDA says everything is hunky-dory, you guys are following all the norms, etc. VAI is voluntary action indicated. The US FDA indicates that, okay, we found some minor problems, but we are hoping that you would go and fix it yourself. We are not going to issue a warning letter or a recommendation. The third option is the unfavorable outcome, which is OAI, official action indicated which means the US FDA has found some problems and thinks that they are serious enough. So after this OAI report, a warning letter is issued to the company. You will now see on your screens a chart that shows both the number and nature of outcome of such inspections and the percentage of favorable outcomes. The percentage for 2023, which is the red line, has gone back up sharply and is in the region seen before the pandemic set in. All the information we've discussed thus far in this conversation pertain to manufacturing sites, inspections by the US FDA and so on. How about authorizations or permissions given to Indian companies to market these drugs in the US? Earlier this month, another business line report showed that India now has the highest number of authorizations given by the US FDA thus far. As per the latest industry data of the US FDA, Market authorizations granted to Indian formulation companies with US FDA approvals stood at 6,316, which is the highest in comparison to any country as of April 2023. In the year 2022, the US FDA granted 1,181 market authorizations of ANDAs or abbreviated new drug applications. Of these, the Indian firms backed 493 of 42% of the total. This is higher than the 36% share of authorizations granted in 2020. How does the process work? Does the application for the ANDA come first or does the inspection by the USFD of the manufacturing site come first? For those new to the language and to the industry, here's what the USFD itself has to say. A note by the administration says, the FDA may approve an ANDA only if the methods used in and the facilities and controls used for the manufacture, processing, packing and testing of the drug are found adequate to ensure and preserve its identity, strength, quality and purity. The administration evaluates the establishments by on-site inspections when the firm is named in the abbreviated new drug application. So obviously the application comes first. To set the context here, some large Indian drug makers have set up facilities, manufacturing sites post pandemic and speedy inspections actually bode well for them. After all, you know, if they're done with the manufacturing and then get the US FDA to come and inspect and then everything is like good to go, then they can start marketing these drugs and it means more revenue to them. India has a total of 670 manufacturing facilities that have been approved by the US FDA. This is the highest number for any country outside of the US. After a break due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the US FDA started resuming these inspections on a low scale starting 2021, but now that number of visits and inspections is seeing a spike. For the period under discussion, which is the first half year ended June 2023, 
The BL report that we refer to shows that Aurobindo Pharma joins Dr. Reddy's and Zydus Life Sciences in reporting improved compliance. In the period 2020 to 2022, Aurobindo's facilities witnessed two warning letters, several OAIs and 10 to 14 observations per visit, the report shows. However, as of the January-March 2023 period, one API unit out of eight of Aurobindo had received a warning letter and all 11 of its formulation units received a voluntary classification. The same business line report points out that Sun Pharma's Halol unit received an import alert early this year and the company had to halt exports to the US this year from its Mohali factory. Lupin reported six favorable outcomes in the last two years, but the BL report points out with its key plants under the lens currently, the impact on operations could be significant. Pitampur with 10 observations in March this year, Manideep with 8 observations in November last, and Tarapur, a warning letter in September 2022, will also cost the company more than 150 crore rupees a year in remediation related costs. And just around the time when the Indian pharmaceutical industry is trying to raise its compliance norms and meet the exacting standards of the US FDA, came the news that cough syrup samples exported from India are causing the death of a few children. The WHO, the World Health Organization, observed last year that these samples exported by this company called Maiden Pharmaceuticals to this country called The Gambia had samples in which were spotted lethal toxins such as ethylene glycol and diethylene glycol. These are typically found in car brake fluid. In a report put out in March, wire agency Reuters says that these ingredients can be used by unscrupulous actors sometimes as a substitute for propylene glycol, which is a key base for syrupy medicines. And why does this happen? Because they can cost less than half the price. In another report, the news agency said that India's drugs regulator told the WHO in December that the propylene glycol used in the syrups came from Goel Pharma Chem, a Delhi-based pharma supplies company and was recorded to have been imported from South Korean manufacturer SKC Company Limited. Goel Pharma said the firm had sourced it from SKC but only indirectly via an intermediary importer. The WHO has asked its member nations to remove from medical shelves all the cough syrup exported by Maiden Pharma and Marion Biotech from India, linked to deaths in the Gambia and Uzbekistan respectively. Now, let's come to the most interesting or probably the crucial part of the industry, APIs or active pharmaceutical ingredients. It became evident during the pandemic that India was significantly dependent on China for the supply of APIs. Without APIs, you cannot make drugs. Think of it like making a car. You may be the best car manufacturer in the world, but if you have to depend on a northern neighbor for steel and paint and accessories, then, you know, unless the supplies arrive, you can't do anything. Likewise, India may have the largest number of US FDA approved pharma manufacturing facilities outside of the US, but if for some reason, like during the pandemic, China was unable to or was, if it becomes unwilling to maintain API supplies, then it puts a whole lot of us in a bind. A paper published last year in the Journal of Positive School Psychology cites India's Trade Promotion Council's figure of API dependence on China at about 85%. India's dependence can be understood from the fact, it says, that during the year 2021, overall 70% of APIs in general and 90% of APIs in particular for certain life-saving antibiotics like penicillin, cephalosporin, and azithromycin were imported from China. In the same paper that we just cited from the Journal of Positive School Psychology, we see that in 1991, India imported only 1% of its APIs from China. But then things changed when China ramped up API manufacturing in the 1990s across its 7,000 drug parks with infrastructure such as effluent treatment plants, subsidized power and water. Production costs in China fell sharply and drove Indian companies out of the API market, the authors assert. Before we go away, here is a question, sort of an assignment for you. Do you know of any Indian companies that make APIs in India?
Leave your answers in the comment section below and we'll try and engage with you. Again, it's a very interesting field. Till we meet again, have a lovely time ahead. But before you go away, do not forget to like, subscribe and share. See you again next week.